Hey, this week's course is called the Tradition Golf Course, but the course is in Charlotte, North Carolina. So the course is in a fairly upscale neighborhood, either, you know, first houses or condos or something like that. But in any case, what I would call somewhere between new starter home neighborhoods and established brick houses and so forth. And it's in a decent neighborhood, but you can't really see any houses from the course, which is kind of cool for a change of pace. It is a very woods course course. It's very, very much a woods course. Lots of pines, no real pine needles. It's not like it's undercut around the, the sides of the fairway and behind the green. Although it isn't so dense that you can't go in there and look for balls, it's still fairly dense. There's a lot of water, especially lately because it's been raining a lot this week. Sure enough, red cells on the map came in around five o'clock. I mean, it was gushing buckets of rain on Friday. This is after it had been raining Wednesday and Thursday, all day long, Wednesday and Thursday, with occasional hours so where it wasn't raining, you know, that uh, over the course of the day. But basically we had three solid days of rain. The course was car path only, and it wasn't even really all that wet Friday when I went out there, but man, it was just pouring. So we got out to the 11th green, and they were like, you know, dudes, you guys need to come off the course. And you could see the clouds rolling in, the whites and the grays and all that stuff. And then, so we came off the course and got off the course just in time and just started pouring buckets. I had to drive back to Winston-Salem through all this rain. But the problem was I didn't finish taking pictures of the course. I didn't finish the round. And I was just too... OCD to not wait until next week to do it. So I went back the next day, got back at the course at around five and, it, and my um, rain check for the week before, for the day before, wasn't the same value that it was that Friday because now it's Saturday and now it's Memorial Day weekend. So now, I don't know, the course was like 58 bucks to play instead of when I went there and played, it was um, 40 or something like that. It was uh, the regular Twilight Week rate. So it cost me an additional $13 to play nine holes. And I was like, I can't believe I drove all the way down here, a whole, a whole hour to drive down here to play this course for nine holes and pay $13 on top of that and then drive back. But I have to admit, by the time I got to about the 15th, I was, you know, okay with it. And I, you know, just played a couple extra balls. And I had pretty much the course to myself at that time. So I was working on some shots, working on some swing changes and so forth. And so, you know, basically, you know, got to play four or five balls in some of the holes and were coming in. So I had my fill and it was humid and it rained again tonight when I got off the course. So there was a, maybe 15 minutes of driving through pouring rain when I got to uh, 25, but uh, it was like you could see this big blanket of clouds coming across the highway and, you know, ro rolled through it. But it was weird because I said when I came up last night from the course, I said, there's no way that going down to play this course was worth an hour of riding back in torrential rain. There was an accident on 85 or 83 going down under this underpass on the highway, which underpasses tend to be notoriously dangerous places for, for people. Either they flood there or something. I don't know if it's such, because they're blocking the water and then you come through the water and then you come back up to the rain or if it's just because there's an on-ramp right there. I've seen accidents on the highway under an underpass, just unbelievable cars flipping over and spinning down the road. Sure enough, they had blocked off the road on the other side. I was going out of town, out of Charlotte, and they had blocked off the highway coming into Charlotte. And I was like, man, shh, what a mess. So going through all that, and it was a good 30, at least 30 minutes of that hour drive was in serious, serious rain. I was, that is, there was no way that was worth it. Find myself, you know, 24 hours later, going right back there. <laughs> it was crazy. But it was... It wasn't bad. I, th I don't think it was a great course, but it wasn't a bad course. 
For one thing, it didn't have any houses on the course. There were houses near the course. And you could occasionally hear some goofball driving through the neighborhood you know, with his bass booming and whatever, which is a fairly ridiculously common thing down here in North Carolina, unfortunately. And this guy had you know, window-shattering bass playing in his car. I couldn't see the car, but I could hear it a mile away. And there was a foursome behind me of these guys in polo shirts and whatever, just having the time of their life obviously drunk by about the 12th hole, playing music in your cart, you know, it just loud, and woo hoo woo wow, what a shot, whatever, just stupid loud. But they were a hole behind me. But other than that, I pretty much had the course to myself at where I was. And it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. And there was one hole, I think it was like the 17th maybe the 8th, 16th, you know, 16th or, yeah, uh, I would say that the tee box for the 17th hole, or the 16th hole, where there were three houses you could see through the woods, right there at the turn, at the back tees, and there was a lady, old lady walking her little chihuahua, you know, out there, and it, it, it was, it was one of those things where it was so close, it was a, walk through a short stretch of which she, she's walking out there. I can tell she walks out there all the time. I didn't say anything to her, say anything to me. She just picked up her dog and tried to walk back towards the house. But there you go. If there are houses around the course, there will be some involvement with the people who live there just because it is a golf course and it is right there. And even though they know they shouldn't be out on the course, they will. there will be at least one person who goes out on the course anyway. You know, And it's just, it's one of those things. But other than that, it was about as good an experience as you could get for a golf course in and of itself. Although I would say the course itself was not really all that great of a course. It's a slope 140 course from the back tees and the back tees were back there. You could, there I think there were a couple of places where you could see there were another set of tees or maybe they'd move the tees up a set, but they normally had four tees and then the back tees were gold tees, and they were back from the blues or whatever you want to call them. I mean, there was some serious distance. I think the course overall was 7,200 yards. It, it wasn't, it didn't seem that long, but it wasn't short. I, I think it's somewhere right around 7,200 yards from the back tees. I'd have to go back and look at it. But in any case, it'll, it'll be in the pictures of the scorecard. But it was a slope 139, 140 course. I'm trying to play courses that are at least 137, if not better, ideally better. Though I'm going to throw in a couple of 110, 120 courses just for comparison. Like there's a, a course I already have in mind to play here, which I'll probably play Sunday or Monday, which is a much shorter, it's like 5,500 yards. I'm going, to, I'm going to probably drop it in. So... The point is, the course had lanes for the most part, not wide fairways, but lanes, not too unusually tight or wide. It was much like Augustine or um, Bear Creek in Dallas, Augustine in Stafford, Virginia. That kind of a course where it's you know lane after lane after lane with some you know par threes with some open spaces around them, but basically all the par fours and par fives are lane type holes. I don't think there really was a dog leg on the course. There may be some there may have been some crescents and I think the first hole was a dog leg left, but other than that, I don't really remember any the sixteenth hole had a kind of a dog leg, but that was it. So maybe two holes that were dog legs. The rest of them were mostly straight, some crescents, some verticality, some uphills, some downhills, some fairways, some fairway bunkers, and some traps around the bunkers, some sloping off behind the green, but nothing outrageous. There were certainly a couple of greens. I think the eighth and the first and the 18th were right on or near a lake. Certainly the fairway for like number seven ran by a lake. So there was a fair amount of water in play, but mainly it was a drive approach chip putt 
kind of course. With not a lot of peril around the greens, certainly you could miss the greens without too much trouble, but there were some bumps and so there were some drop-offs in places, and it did have some, I would say it was a, like a, a medium level hot sauce. It wasn't going to really make you uncomfortable. It wasn't super hard to play. It wasn't a ball eater, but it definitely had a certain amount of, it wasn't like you just roll out there and just stroll around and goof off and play the course without a problem. It, I would say the bigger problem in terms of eating balls was the, were the fairways because they all had these solid, you know, ivy slash sticker briar slash um, woods sides to them. And there wasn't a lot of room from the fairway to the woods, but you could go in the woods and you could find your ball. It's just that you didn't really want to do it. You have to like the second or third time you did it, you go back in there and walk around and unless some, there's a clear space where a tree went down or something, you didn't really want to go in those woods and, and look around. Although it wasn't impossible and I did find a lot of balls in the woods. So I, I, I can't say that I didn't have balls go in the woods. I definitely did. And that's good because it's not so easy that you could just go out there and miss hit drives and, and hit offline and stuff and they're just going to be in play. It wasn't that easy of a course. It was definitely tough enough. The good challenging course off the tee although i would say it was only a modest challenge from the fairways and the approach shot enough of a challenge but not really long it wasn't super long and the greens were not hard to get on they weren't really elevated but they were certainly sloped well they certainly had some swales and stuff and the greens were very fast i one of the, one of the immediate things i noticed is they were very fast and it was a, a definite adjustment to make to get used to the speed. Even yesterday when they were wet, they were fast. And today they were dry when I played. Because that's one of the reasons I wait until 5 o'clock. Because they give, of course, a good chance to dry out. And they were almost bone dry when I played today. And they were still fast. And so, you know, it wasn't like they were soft. They, it wasn't like they were super hard. It wasn't like they were super slopey but they were definitely fast and, and they were a challenge to put on. They were in good condition. They were nicely cut, not too short, not too long. And they were definitely fast greens. So I definitely liked that about the greens. It, they were a good challenge to put on. I'm going to chip on and hold the, the green. Good challenge to make putts. And it wasn't hard, a hard course. But it definitely was a, a decent challenge. It wasn't a great course, but it was, definitely was an okay course. It wasn't the most fun I've ever played. And it wasn't the most quiet course because I think there's a, a road that runs by certain holes of the course. Like number, I guess, 2 and number 11 and 12. The tee boxes for 11 and 12. Uh, tee box for 12 and the, the green for 11. There's definitely a road that runs by there which is the, the course, the road, that, the main road that's outside the course. So there's definitely some traffic noise. But overall, it was a good, decent outing. And it wasn't super expensive. It was, you know, it wasn't cheap, but it wasn't super expensive. I, even today, I think it was like 50, I think the guy said it was $58 with a cart this weekend. And I think that's the normal price during the week also. And then after four o'clock, it's like $45 with a cart after four o'clock. And I, play, I, I got yesterday on the course at two o'clock, 2.15 Friday. And we got rain out at five. And then I came back today at five. And I don't know what happened with the price, but it ended up having to pay another $13 for nine holes with a rain check for the nine holes. Just, I was like, what? How could it must have been a lot more expensive at five o'clock today than it was at two thirty on Friday, which is which is just nutty. I don't know how it made. I don't know what happened with that, but I was like, whatever, man. Because because sometimes I just hate to argue with people about stuff. I I just got to the point where unless it's even though it doesn't make sense to me, and there's something clearly wrong, if they think it makes sense. I don't want to argue with people because it, it just is, it's kind of like grading on either their stupidity or my stupidity. Let's put that one way or the other. Like, all right, fine. $10, fine. You know, $13, fine. Here, take it. Plus, I got 
uh, two packs of tea, so it was a uh, um, dollar piece. So it was $11, basically more for nine today at five o'clock than it was yesterday at 2.30. How does that make any sense? It just, it, you know, it's, it's just crazy. Anyway, played it. Uh, actually, it was kind of decent. I don't complain. I'm glad I finished the round. And I have, if anything, only one complaint. And I'm not even really sure it's a complaint because I'm, I'm kind of happy in a way that it was like that. Is it was car path only both days. And I'm not complaining about that because it certainly was wet in places. But at the same time, I kind of wonder, isn't it better for courses to be cart path only and keep the carts off the, off the fairways, off the, the course, you know, and let the grass grow and let, let the, you know, you're, you're there to play golf on grass, right? So the problem with letting people drive carts on the uh, fairways is it just grinds the sides of the cart path up, you know, where they go into the course. It grinds the fairways up wherever it's, people tend to ride out. But uh, yeah, okay, absolutely walking across the course, hitting a ball and walking back, that definitely takes time. And on a day like today where it was humid, I could not believe how heavy the air was. It was really humid. And when the sun was out, it was baking. I'm shooting for 20 minutes. And it was a lot, okay, to play this course when it was when it was sunny. And I got to tell you, it's only June. I can't imagine what it's like in July and August and whatever. It wasn't really that hot, but man, it was heavy. It was just this heavy, hot air. And I was like, oh, ugh, ugh, walking around out there. I don't know, man. It, you know, but... I'm not going to say I'm in the best of shape, but still, there is an argument for walking a course like this, at least with a cart, you know, with a, a rolling cart. I can definitely see it, but I would not want to have carried a bag out there in this course. But at the same time, it isn't nearly as vertical as some courses that I played and walked in this area. So that is the traditions in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'll give this course a B. It's a decent course. I, I can't quite give it a B plus. It's not all that great. There's really nothing to see on the course except for the occasional lakes or whatever that are on the course. So a solid B, I'll give it. And I hope that you get out and get a chance to play it because it is worth playing if you live in the area at least once or twice. There's no question about that. It's definitely a decent course. It is a good practice course, a good course to get out and get some holes in, hit some balls on. But it's just not the kind of course where I would say, oh, I drive, you know, five hours to play this course. That, it's not that good of a course.